So another AWSI event in Hood River just completed, and that means it's time to take a look at the upcoming trends in the wind and water sports market with a pretty strong emphasis in the wingding arena. In this episode, let's see what is, what's coming, and what could be in a sports market that is extending well beyond no wind limitations. Winging continues to explode in the wind sports market and it isn't anywhere more prevalent than Hood River where on a windy late summer day you will find from the event site all the way down to the hook dozens upon dozens of hungry wingers embarking on a new life's journey. It's amazing the explosion that has occurred over the last two years. It's encouraging to see where the sport is as well as where it can go. And even though much of where the sport is headed, well, it's unattainable for the majority of us, we still have the ability to be out there at the same time with front row seats and internal fulfillment from our own performance. One trend in the winging hydrofoil market is that the front wings are getting higher in aspect and smaller in size. That means increased speed on the water and seemingly endless glide. Here's Delta George to explain this trend just a little bit. And I think one of the biggest trends we're seeing since last year is uh, using smaller front wings and higher aspect ratio wings. Uh, because we have less power with the hand wing than we did with the kite, uh, it's very important the wings are efficient and um, there's a trend towards higher and higher aspect ratio wings, but of smaller and smaller sizes. Uh, I think the two big things that have happened is hand wings have gotten more rigid. So uh, the first or second generation hand wings, when you pumped, the frame itself was so flexible that there was a lot of distortion and you just couldn't generate a lot of power by pumping the wing. So we needed a bigger wings to get up on foil. Uh, I think the second thing that's happened is I've just become more fit from winging all the time. I can pump for longer and more efficiently and my skill level at pumping has improved quite a lot and that's allowed me to pump up on wings even this small um, in pretty moderate conditions. Um, so the question is, well, okay, so it's harder to pump up onto foil, what's the benefit? Um, a wing like this is just so fast and slippery through the water, very maneuverable. Um, and I think the sport's just gotten faster. We've gone from cruising around on these hand wings with an average speed of maybe 13 to 16 miles an hour to people that are out there cruising at 18 to 20 miles an hour and maybe top speeds of 24 or even higher. The talk of the show was the Delta 850 front wing, as well as the always high quality ART lineup from Axis, also the new North high aspect wings, the Fanatic, the Slingshot Phantasm, and the personal favorite of mine from new front wings at the show was the F1 Eagle series. What is apparent is that the quality of the hydrofoil market is really, really good, and it's almost hard to swing and miss when choosing one of these front wings. Hand wing development has continued to go the direction of lighter, stiffer, and it seems many brands are also going towards the rigid handles for a more connected feel. Also, most booms are now being produced in a smaller diameter, which I think has been needed from the start. Ocean Rodeo with their Alula Glide lineup has some interesting new materials in the canopy coming down the pike, along with interchangeable handle systems which will allow switching between a boom and a stiff handle arrangement. Duotone, in my opinion, continues to lead the charge with many wings narrowing that gap. The North Mode has entered the arena. The F1 Strike V2, well, it's an obvious choice, as well as Slingshot entering the rigid handle and boom market. The Takuma RS, Fly Surfer Mojo, Core XC, and the Airrush Free Wing were also frequented on the water. The wing board. Oh, the wing board. Most questions are usually about proper volume size for said rider, and there are some interesting designs out there, some beautiful creations, but at the end of the day, the wing board is just something to stand on, right? Well, not so fast. Enter Apple Tree. Hi guys, uh, Vichar here from Apple Tree Surfboards and Green Egg Kiteboarding. 
Uh, we're here at beautiful Hood River, AWSI 2022. Just wanted to introduce you a little bit to our brand. So we are a brand from Holland and Europe. Um, we have our own, fully our own uh, production facility in Portugal where we produce all the boards by hand. Um, so what we specialize in is making super durable, super strong carbon fiber and fiberglass boards, mainly doing the carbon fiber uh, wing and foil boards at the moment. Uh, unique feature is that they are completely waterproof. So even if you do get to ding them, uh, water cannot penetrate the board. It does not delaminate. They're super strong. Even in the strong sun here, you can see there's a fully black board. Uh, it doesn't delam. It doesn't need an air vent. It's really, really durable kind of boards, but still get that performance that, that you want. Uh, they're all custom made, so we can do super cool custom graphics like this one. This is not a print. It's actually fully made in, uh, in resin tint in the final layer of the board. So those are, those, are, uh, uh, those are on offer, you can order them through the shop and the stock boards are, are usually in stock so you can get them right away. Um, so yeah, check them out. If you've got any questions, give the, give the shop a call or shoot us a message and we'll help you out. Hope to see you soon on the water. Oh yeah, kiting. I'll have to admit, it was kite foiling rather than twin tip riding that was dominating the AWS side this week due to some lighter winds. But there was still some of this at the event site and Arthur, it was looking pretty phenomenal on Elevate Kites. The North Reach, it continues to be a staple along with the F1 Bandit and the SLS lineup from Duotone with an emphasis on lighter and stronger materials. Core was also well represented on the water and Slingshot, they had their new Code Kite while North released their Code Zero Kite. Mm -hmm. Different disciplines, but maybe some intra-office chatter could be beneficial next time. Speaking of slingshot, well, the UFO V2 looked amazing. Granted, it was Fred Hope riding it, which I think deserves at least maybe a quick interlude. Walking like a G, sipping Hennessy, President Sweet, looking like a young Barack Obama. Skipping to the B, giving hella heat, I'ma need a seat just to count up all these dots and commas. I think it's evident, I'm the better man, I'm the jam, I'ma have you crushing like a four-wheel monster. Who you know who looking like this, for real? Who you know who looking like this? You listen to me, I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed. I ain't no dancer, just got some hip in my feet. Now throw your hands up. Ooh, you bring the lighter. Something being released this fall by Fly Surfer that I'm really excited about is the hybrid foil kite. Partly single skin, partly closed cell, water relaunching. Close cousin to the non swimming peak. Hello everybody, I'm Chris from Flysurfer. Um, I shortly talk about our new upcoming product, the Hybrid. It's going to be released at the end of October in 2022. So recently, uh, the Flysurfer Peak got a big following and uh, many people use this kite on the water as well. So obviously the question arises that, is this product water relaunchable or not? And therefore we came up with a new product and a solution for it. So the hybrid um, is a partly closed cell foil kite with a single skin part um, towards the, the trading edge. So it's 40% closed cell, 60% um, single skin. What's special about this product is um, it's very good to teach children with. So you combine like two worlds, it's a good school product and it's very good for free riding on a hydrofoil. So our vision um, on the product is that every family should own one of these hybrids so you can go on a twin tip with your child and then jump on the foil in the end and have a good time. Thanks Chris, fantastic new product from Fly Surfer, and I'm looking forward to purchasing one soon. A couple of bar line combos that raised some attention was the Duotone Trust Bar, which now has simple click and play with their chicken loop. It has an adjustable throw, and it also has a quick adjustment to convert lines from a high Y to a low Y. Nash, they're releasing a more minimalistic bar line package that looks more similar to a racing setup, but it should also be great for kite foilers and kite surfers who don't want to make that custom minimalistic bar and line setup themselves. So we have discussed a lot of the technology that is going into the wind sports market. Unfortunately, I have excluded windsurfing, wind foiling, 
and a lot of traditional kiteboarding, and I apologize, but where technology is really exploding is on the recreational water side, outside the limitations of wind. Let's take a look at what may be in this market. Since Lyft led the way with their efoil production years ago, there has been a push for assisted water transport many times using the efficiency of a hydrofoil to accomplish it. Now, a few brands are on the market with the efoil. Uh, Takuma, they're releasing a jet efoil. A new product called Vortex efoil can be retrofit to any board and aluminum mass setup by just attaching to the track of a foil board. This could be interesting. I would though still like to see if uh, drag on the water start and touchdowns are an issue. The Hydro Flyer is a more tame efoil that allows upper body support and forward facing posture to still achieve that magic carpet ride. The Moto Winch was also another interesting product at the show. It allowed no wind day riding at the event site and also a stunt exhibition from Jesse Richmond, who is no stranger to these type of opportunities. But this great progression in technology and innovation is also affecting positively some of the most elite riders in more simplistic forms. Whether that is flat water pump starting to foil with a paddle or dock starting and pumping for over 22 minutes for a world record by Keaton Fisher from Montana. You heard me right, Keaton pumped on foil for over 22 minutes. I think Axis may be pretty proud of your accomplishment on this one, Keaton. And it's just more evidence of the combination of great design and innovation intersecting with great athletes. So that wraps up this AWS side. Again, much thanks to the Green Hat crew for allowing me to tag along on this ride. If you enjoy this channel, please reach out to them for your wing, kiting, e-foil, rocket ship needs. Hope to see you on the water. I'll leave you with just a few moments more from my time here in this beautiful Columbia Gorge. And we'll see you next time.